Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we have another collaboration with Steve from Crypto Crew University. Steve keeps us focused on the charts, the data, we leave emotions out of it. And Steve has a lot of, lot of useful indicators that he uses uh, that help complement what we use on our channel. If you're not subscribed to Steve, I would encourage you to go ahead and pause the video, head on over to Steve's channel, make sure you guys subscribe to Steve, and, and I think you will, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how, how he focuses strictly on the data, unlike, uh, unlike, you know, uh, unlike a lot of us, it's easy to, to let emotions um, kind of rule for a while. So let us, let us jump back in to the chart, Steve. What do you have for us? Uh, what do you have for us this time? It's good to be back in the cryptoverse, Ben. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I will say first and foremost, if if somehow you live under a rock and this is your first time seeing Ben, this is where you want to be. Ben will take care of you. Ben will keep you level-headed. Um, in my opinion, Ben is is one of the most trusted people in crypto. He built his own brand. He He's here to help. And He's, he does an incredible job. So subscribe to him if you're coming from my channel or if you have no idea who I am either, just subscribe to Ben, you'll be very happy. Now, log growth curves. So we're gonna get into two parts. In our last video, we covered the monthly RSI. If you didn't see that, I highly recommend you start there. We'll follow up here in a bit, but we're gonna start with the nuts and bolts here for the log growth curves. Now, these, all these little lines on here are the Fibonacci levels, right? You've got your green median line, which represents the 50% Fib level, right? Right above it is a 61.8. Right below it is a 38.2. This represents, these three represent the golden ratio. If you hear that term thrown around, that's, that's the most critical level for the Fib. When, you, when you're talking about the Fib, you're always talking about the golden ratio ratio. So just keep that in mind and keep that in your back pocket as we continue on our journey with this chart. Now, starting at the big picture, every single cycle, right, happened at the top, right? We peaked here in 2011 at the top of our log growth curves. Number two, we peaked here at the log growth curves. Number three, we peaked at the top of the log growth curves. And we are going to discuss what we believe to be happening here. We have not peaked yet. We'll talk about where that peak is as well. Before we get into that, we have to understand that the bottoms of every single bear market happened at the bottom of our log growth curves. In cycle number one, the golden ratio, we understand the top, we understand in the bottom, we understand these cycles. Here's where it gets interesting. I want you to focus on the movements of the market and particularly the speed at which they're moving. For example, when we compare this market cycle, right, the previous one to this one, we know that this Parts. emotional opinions. It's not what I what I hope to happen or what might happen. It's just it's it's only just the facts in the charts that we're looking at right here. So the facts are that this previous cycle, as soon as it left the bottom here, it took 12 months to get to this median line. Remember the 50% level of the fib. It took us 12 months. So as soon as we bounced off of here, it took us 12 months to the median line. Right here most recent one, it took three months to get to the, the median line. That's incredibly fast. It's substantially faster than 12 months. But if we continue to look left on the chart, we notice a similarity happening with this cycle where we were at the bottom. We finally broke away from the bottom here on this candle, and it took one, two, three months to reach the median line. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So focus in on this red line, because not only did the market move incredibly fast, it was overextended, everyone was incredibly bullish, but it actually got sopped out right at the 76.39 on the FIB, which is this red line, which means 
the market moved incredibly fast. It moved past the median line on the next candle past the median line, right? Here's the median line. The next candle passed. It went right to the 7639. Now, why is that important? Well, on the market cycle that we're in right now, it moved incredibly fast. It took exactly three months to get to the median line. And on exactly the next candle, we went right to the 7639, right to the 7639. Now, here's where the magic happens. Because on our past time that we went right to the 7639, we fell all the way back down through the median line, right? We fell even all the way through that critical golden ratio, right? You can see it right here on the chart. 7639 fell through the median line and fell all the way down through the, the golden ratio with the wick, not the body. Remember, the bodies of the candle tell the facts. The wicks tell the story, right? So if we fast forward, we went, we were super overextended, took three candles to the median line, one candle to the 7639, fell back through the median line with a wick all the way down through the golden ratio. The body held on the golden ratio. This is the exact scenario. And again, we have a long wick here. We need to be excited about that. If the candle body closed down here, I would be very nervous, very nervous, but it didn't. We had a lot of buyers come in. We had a lot of protection here. There's critical structure here for multiple reasons. So the story becomes we've followed pound for pound, move for move this previous cycle. What happened next is really interesting. When we came down to this level, right, we held the body. Remember, the bodies tell the facts. We held every single body thereafter right on the golden ratio. Remember, the golden ratio is the second line, right? This 38.2. So this month, this month, this month, this month held support at that golden ratio. And then we broke back through the median line and went to the moon, right? So are we going to repeat that history in present day? Are we going to hold the bodies as support on our golden ratio, which would represent this $35,000 now, right? And next month, it would be even a little bit higher, potentially around 40,000 and next month, even a little bit higher. So are we going to do that? Or is this a different type of movement? Now, there is one point of concern, which we discussed on our previous video, is this data point here. So historically, for 10 years, Bitcoin has respected the 71 level on the monthly RSI, has more respect for that level than any other level. This represents a bull and bear scenario. When we're above 71, the market's incredibly bullish. It moves incredibly rapidly and it moves all the way up to our market cycle top. The only time it goes below 71 is when we've finished our market cycle top and we finally go back below 71, which we haven't been below in multiple years. If you fast forward to cycle two, we finally got above 71. We went to the, the moon, but we stayed above 71 until we put in our top. And then we finally, after years later, went below 71, only after our market cycle top. The one data point that's out of whack is this one. We came all the way down to 61, not 71. So here on our price action, we look good. We're right on schedule. Here in the RSI, not on schedule. This is the outlier of the data points. So the story becomes, are we going to hold support with the bodies of these and continue to hold support at the golden ratio and push through in a handful of months and reach a market cycle top, which just to give you some point of reference, mm -hmm. the current trajectory of this month is at 112, 113,000, right? If you fast forward a handful of months, potentially to a November-ish timeframe, it puts you at about 130. And then around Christmas, we'll put you about 140. Just as a point of reference, knowing that so far, we've put in top one, top two, top three, all at the tops. And again, back to the RSI, this was our warning top. 
this was our true top. This was our warning top. This was our true top. All happening above the 90 level on the monthly RSI. We just had, hopefully, our warning top. You know, it's interesting. As I, a couple, a couple of things that I, I think that are interesting here is um, the 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 cycle top, according to this log uh, growth curve here, um, would be you know it would be between 100 to 200 k. Uh, not not 300k, not 400k, um, which I, I think that makes a lot of sense, you know, and, and I really do think that makes a lot of sense just because we, we have to understand, you know, like diminishing returns and market capitalization so much higher ma makes a lot of sense. Um, what's interesting, if you go back to 2013, I, I, maybe this is something we should keep an eye on. Uh, if you go back to like 2013, it looks like the first month we had a close above the green line um, after you know, after our consolidation phase, before the uh, before that massive candle that just took us to the top, the that very last candle before the final explosive candle that took us to the top of the cycle one there, um, yeah, that candle that was the first month. It looks like we had a monthly close back above that level after having our our major pullback. So maybe that'll be an interesting level for us to watch in the current cycle. Um, I'm curious where. What is the current what what is the current price um, corresponding to that to that line right now? And then maybe is there is it possible to look to see where it where that price would be over the next few months so we have an idea of of what to look out for maybe? So right now we're at about forty five thousand. Okay. This month. Now, if we were to follow that, because we're supposed to be holding resistance here hypothetically, mm -hmm. for multiple months. That's according to the facts in this chart. So next month, we're looking at 46. The month after that, we're looking at 48. And the month after that would be 51. So hypothetically, according to the facts in this chart, we stay below 50K for the next handful of months. Mm -hmm. We hold it as resistance. We hold the golden ratio as support and we bounce in this channel and we we basically are boring. It, it, the market is boring. The market's moving sideways. A lot of people will predict that it's dead, it's over. And there'll be some people that will still say it's going to a million dollars or $10 million within a few months. But we will look at that level and, with a critical eye, knowing that it's a golden ratio and we'll have to see. And the key is how are we going to play with this seven one is not a little baby level on the four hour chart or the one day chart this is this is king ping this is the big daddy this is 71 it's got tons of data points and it should be incredibly small if we were to hold that as support that that's rocket fuel and buckle up right yeah that's what i'm looking at because if you if you look at 2013 um you know like we basically just we didn't put in a new all-time high for approximately six months and then it just blasted mm -hmm. off after after that long consolidation phase so if we do continue to emulate 2013 i i think you know it makes sense to have sort of a, a cool off period for for quite a while before we can you know, potentially make a make a sustained move to 100k. You know, where we can actually move up. And I think in order to do that, we it makes sense to to build out some support for a while to show, hey, like we're steady at these levels, um, before we can really get the fuel we need to to move higher. But I, I appreciate you showing this uh, chart. It was uh, a pleasure to have you on the channel again. Um, this is one I, I'm sure we're going to want to touch base on in a couple months to see are we are we you know, staying right underneath uh, in our consolidation phase. And if we are, what is the, what are those new levels that we need to be on the lookout for in case we go above? Um, so we'll, we'll definitely be sure to have you back on the channel uh, uh, to, to update, to, up, to give us an update in a couple months as, as the market continues to evolve. But everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're not subscribed to Steve, make sure you guys go subscribe to him right now. You will, you'll love his channel. He, he, these charts and more, he sticks to the data nothing more than the data. So make sure you guys go subscribe to Steve. Uh, subscribe here if you're not subscribed. Thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye.